years, I've been hearing about this revolutionary product, femtos and picos and small cells and how it's going to change the industry. And um, as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, we do a lot of designs. There's a six to 12 month timeline. We're not currently factoring in um, small cells in our design. So my question for you is, where are small cells today? And what is the current state of enterprise grade femtos? Okay, it's a good question. So I think we should uh, view small cells generically. Uh, the cell really is the dimension of the solution. And we, we tend to categorize them with the solutions which can be small cells as either a small cell, which is a DAS system, small cell, which is a Wi-Fi radio access technology, or a small cell which is sourced by a locally SOC solved or supported base station. In the latter category of small cell solutions delivered by small base stations or femto cells, we, we view the solution as extremely interesting, um, a very interesting technology. However, for enterprise solutions, superb performance is fundamentally important. We must have excellent handoff between cells inside the building because our power users for enterprises will, will not accept low quality. There must be excellent handoff into and outside the building. So uh, intra to exterior, exterior to intra, handover must be reliable and repeatable. And we can't afford to have interference zones where the exterior micro network is interfering with the small base station solution inside the enterprise. So when we look at release aid devices today, and there's a lack of support for home node B to home node B handoff. There are issues around soft handoff support on a standardized basis because there's no IURH solution and so on. So we see it as the small base stations are not quite ready for enterprise grade operation. Um, so uh, there, there are other issues, but at least those standards issues we think are important given the fact that really say it is the predominant device or UE solution available today. For AT&T, we complete the, the rolling out of residential Phantom last year because I mean, consumers across the nation is able to purchase residential Phantom any, any, anywhere in this country. But the speaking to the enterprise Phantom, yes, the company is now focusing on the enterprise Phantom because we believe that uh, you know, that's going to be the next stage. The CTO office is still evaluating the Phantom, uh, enterprise Phantom solutions. We have not released the approved vendor or approved solutions, but uh, I expect uh, sometime next year we will announce that result. Are you, are you designing it? Are you seeing Femtos anywhere right now, enterprise grade? We're not designing it yet. Um, we haven't seen an application like you, George. We have uh, a lot of carrier specific projects, uh, a lot of design specific requests from the, uh, the operators, so we haven't seen anything yet where we had a design in-house. Excellent. Excellent. Um, our next question will just be a general, whoever, uh, whoever wants to chime in on this. Um, does the need for multi-carrier, multi-band, and multi-radio access technology operation complicate small cell deployment? And, um, and does the combination of DAS and small cells improve that outlook? So the, the quick answer is absolutely. I mean, after you're adding so many layers of small components into a network, it becomes more and more complicated. That was a close-ended question. I knew it was yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, think, I think the real question is, you know, how do you deal with that, right? right. I, there's different uh, sounds and the standard bodies working on that. And uh, the industry, I mean, the entire ecosystem put together a lot tremendous effort to address these issues. I mean, I would think in, in a, a heterogeneous network architecture, with the increase of the network complexity, some kind of self-organization network or some features will, will be needed to, to, to design and to just to manage those kind of network with such complexity.